Ghostman Horror Host here, Enchanted Forest of Horror, by Emmeline Church. I straightened my shoulders and looked, took a short, slow breath, pushing aside the anxiety and clutched my stomach. A cabin sat at the end of my long, narrow driveway. I stared at it for a moment and glanced back at my car its tyres buried in mud up to the hubcaps. You could do this, Nicola. I thought and started walking. The merry driveway cut through a cluster of old and man- gangly maple trees. They gnarled leafless branches, clawed at the dusky sky. The wind howled past me, filling my nose with pungent odour of decaying wood. I could hardly believe I let my girlfriends convince me to join them for the weekend at the Bear Creek Lodge at the site of Bradley Mercica, eight years ago, some crazy guy named Bradley had gunned down six hikers in the woods near the lodge before a forage ranger shot and killed him. Oh, nothing unusual has happened since then. A place has become a playground for urban legends. Rumors abound that the ghosts of the dead hikers inhabit the lodge, and the murdered spirit returns to the forest every year in search of the rangers who stopped his killing spree. But supposedly, you've never been able to find him. My girlfriend said, Fault, it'd be fun to stay at the lodge on the anniversary of the massacre, sharing ghost stories and trying to give each other nightmares. And now, here I am, stranded and alone in an accursed forest. Just my luck. I approached the cabin hesitantly. I knew someone was home. Smoke bellowed from the chimney. A fell light flickered through the curtains at the front window. But I felt awkward asking a complete stranger for help. How did I know he wasn't some axe-wielding murderer who preyed on young, single young women like me? I stifled a chuckle. Come on, I traded myself. This isn't a horror movie. Pushing away my uneasiness, I stepped up, stepped up to the front door and not. The door creaked open, and a tall, stocky man with greying brown hair stood at the threshold. He looked familiar to me, but I couldn't place where I had seen him before. My eyes shifted, his eyes shifted from my face to the air behind me. I snuck a glorious glance over my shoulder, just to make sure no one was there. May I help you? he asked, amily. I'm hoping so, I replied, trying my best to sound sweet and hopeless. I was supposed to be meeting my friends at Bear Creek Lodge up the road, but my car has got stuck in the mud near the, your driveway. Do you have a phone I can use? I have my friends come over and pick me up. I need the cell phone in my, I, I held up the cell phone in my hands and wrinkled my nose in the mock disgust. No, sir, no service here. He offered me a friendly smile. Sure, no problem, he said. Come on in. He opened the door wide and noticed a green forest ranger jacket and hat hanging from the coat rack behind him. I breathed a sigh of relief. I had come to the right place. So you work for the forest service? I asked desperately towards the jacket. I do, he said. My name is Russell. Russell, I exclaimed. I suddenly remember who he was. You were the forest ranger who stopped the Bradley Massacre. Your pictures are all in the papers. You're a hero. Russell waved away the compliment. I was only doing my job. He turned away from me and led me into his living room. I got the impression he didn't want to talk about it. Phone's in here, he said. I'm glad you were home. There weren't many houses in these woods. It's a long walk to the lodge. You are fortunate. Actually, I was. Uh, uh, I usually visit my sister this time of year. I haven't. I don't like being around here on the anniversary. Oh, well, too many memories, shrugged, for us all shrugged. But my sister's staying with her daughter this month, so here I am, pointing to a small table near the crouch. The phone's right there. Well, thank you, I said. Oh, and my name is Nicole. I added, I added, suddenly remembering my manners. Pleased to meet you, he motioned to the air, the air next to me. And who is this? Who is what? I glanced around the empty room. Who are you talking about? He was joking. I searched his face. But I found no humour in his eyes. Russell looked at as if confused as I felt. You don't you don't know this person? he asked. What person? I don't come from I, I didn't come with anyone. I instantly annoyed. If it's a joke or a sick joke, I am finding it very funny. This man stepped in behind you when I let you in. Russell's voice trailed off. 
He appeared to be watching something, and couldn't I, and I couldn't see his frightened expressions. Sent an icy chill down my spine. What was going on here? Are you can you can see somebody? I asked incredulously, looking around. Again, the hair in the back of my neck tingled like many spiders shuddering across my skin. Russell took a step, few, few steps backwards. Bradley, he said, speaking into the empty air. No, it cannot be. His voice was his face was ashen. It seemed completely drained of blood. This is impossible. How can you? Russell shrieked, and his hand jerked upward, his finger twisting and bending grotesquely. He lurched sideways, and his torso thrust towards forward, as if he struck from behind an invisible force. Blood trickled from the corners of his mouth. He looked at me from desperate, terror-filled eyes. Run, he croaked. I turned and fed through the door, cringing when I heard Russell's body fall to the floor. A cabin, a cold breeze tainted and fall, foul, chased me outside and tugged at my hair. Long bony fingers scraped down my shoulder and tore a hem of my jacket. I barely reached the driveway when something wrapped around my ankle. I fell, frailing and kicking to the ground. I groped around in a muddy soil, looking for something, anything that could be used as a weapon. My fingers bumped. Against a broken tree, like I grabbed it and jumped up, swinging the trees wide and wide out. Nothing. I swung it again as, as I did. The branch was ripped from my hands and flung to the ground. One more had spun around and took off in panic. Through the padded moonlight, I could make, just make out the gravelled road up ahead. Suddenly, wispy arms coiled around me like a snake and snapped me back, nearly pulling me off my feet. I took a painful, grasping breath. Then I was then uh, I was launched forward, landing in the gravel on my hands and knees. The jagged rocks tore from my pants and left my hands sticky with blood. As I scrambled to my feet, a hallowed fringed crackle echoed from the trees, filling my head with madness and stri- shaking me to the very core. A rumbling of an approaching engine brought me back to my senses. Just down the road, I could see headlights blobbing in the distance. I ran towards the vehicle, my arms waving frankly and tears screaming down my face. As the truck slowed, a familiar voice called out to me, Nicole, it is you, it is Amber, one of the girls from I was planning to join us at the lodge. What's the matter? Where's your car? I threw open the passenger door and jumped in the truck. Turn around, I said urgently. Amber stared at me with large, frightened eyes. What? Turn around, I screamed. Now? Okay, she mumbled, pulling the truck into a right that tight turn. I watched from the back window with the maple tree surrounding the cabin faded. The sight, and the wee slowly replaced with the terror that consumed me. My heart hadn't stopped founding until we were back on the main highway. But then, but even then, I wondered how long it would be before the memory of that hideous crackling laugh was stopped and wanted me.